Okay, congratulations on your new purchase. Congratulations. That's it? Just like that? Is this what you have been thinking all these while? Can I upgrade just like them with a HDB on hand? Let's go into what they have been through and the thinking processes behind the scenes. Hey dear, mm -hmm. our HDB is going to MOP next month. Eh. Mm -hmm. Can we change the condo please? Dear, you know how expensive condo nowadays have become. Eh? And oh, you, every month you tell me you want this bag, you want that bag. Sounds familiar? Are you having a similar conversation with your spouse too? Hey dear, that day uh, you were asking me about the uh, upgrading condo, right? You see, uh, there's this new launch, uh, it looks good. Eh? Oh really? That day I look at back, uh, I don't know who is nagging at me. Eh. Then the next day, someone bring me to test drive car and so tempted to buy. Now this should be familiar to you. Question is, how did this family manage to purchase a new launch unit in the end? Let's find out. First and foremost, you need to ensure that your HDB have met MOP. Next, you need to establish how much cash and CPF proceeds upon selling your HDB. To do that, let's take a look at some HDB resale statistics to do an illustration for your better understanding. We will take the average of a 5-room from this list to be approximately $690,000. Let's assume both owners have used $150,000 of CPF with an accrued interest of $30,000 each, transacting at $690,000, estimated outstanding loan to be $180,000, legal fee to be approximately $800. From this example, there's approximately $134,000 of cash and $360,000 of CPF proceeds. Do note that this is not including any cash and CPF savings that a couple have saved over the past few years while staying in a HDB. Let's talk about savings. According to Department of Statistics Singapore, the 10-year average savings rate is 29.8% of our income. Let's assume a household earning an average of $15,000 per month over the past 5 years. The total income will be $900,000. Therefore, the average savings after 5 years, based on 29.8%, will be approximately $268,000. What about CPF savings? Based on CPF Annual Report 2021, it is worth to note close to 16% of Singaporeans aged between 35 to 40 having a balance of $300,000 to $400,000 in their CPF and nearly 10% having balance between $400,000 to $500,000. What's more impressive is there are around 44% of those aged between 40 to 45 having at least $300,000 in their accounts. Conservatively, if there is $80,000 from each person, a couple will have approximately $160,000 of additional funds from their CPF for their next purchase. And so, with a total of $402,000 of cash and $520,000 of CPF, what can a couple buy? I'm sure you're curious what will be the maximum purchase price based on the above illustration. Based on a quick calculation, as long as the first 25% of property value plus stamp duty falls within $922,000, that will be the maximum that you can consider. To give you a rough idea, this is an example of a progressive payment for a $3.2 million property. You can see that 5% booking fee plus a remaining down payment equates to $800,000. Buyer's stamp duty is around $112,000 and legal fee is $3,000. Altogether, it will be less than $922,000 of cash and CPF outlay. The remaining progressive payment of 75% will be via loan disbursement according to the stages of construction. Okay, congratulations on your new purchase. Congratulations. Want to find out if you can really afford to upgrade? Call us today. We will work out a few viable options to give you and your family a peace of mind.